Ambush. How's it going? Welcome to this episode of the Desert Tiger Podcast here with me, your host of the DTP. I am Colton G. And today on the show, we are joined by the legendary Billy Newton Davis. Yes, the multiple Juno Award winning vocalist joins us here today to take us behind his new EP, Have We Met. And on this new EP, Billy is taking five classic tracks and is recapturing them with a new energy. Yes, and we're going to be diving into some of these tracks. Why were they important to Billy? Why did he select them for this EP? This EP was also recorded live off the floor, and we're going to be diving into how that came together and what the process was like. What were those studio sessions like being able to play with everybody at the same time as i mean many of you know that's not really how a lot of groups do it these days so what was that like and of course billy also likes to stay busy by being involved with multiple charities in his community that are close to his heart and we're going to be talking about some of the work that he has been able to do through this past year. Yes. And then we're going to be diving a little bit into what Billy has coming in the future as well. Yes, all of this and more in this episode of the DTP. And it is all brought to you today by deserttigermerch.com where you go to copy yourself something to represent the show everywhere that you go yes deserttigermerch.com and now now it is time that we got the energy the vibe right for this conversation with Billy Newton Davis and what better way to do that then to play one of the tracks off of Have We Met. This is Night and Day. Like the beat, beat, beat of the top top when the jungle shadows fall. Like the tick tick tock of a stately clock as it stands against the wall. Like the drip 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 of the raindrops when the summer shower is through. So a voice within me keeps repeating you, 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 night and day. You are the one, only you beneath the moon and under the sun. Whether near to me or far It doesn't matter where you are I think of you night and day Day and night Why is it so That this longing for you follows Wherever I go in the roaring traffic's boom In the silence of my Lonely room I think of you Night and day Night and day Under the heart of me There's an oh such a hungry yearning Burning inside of me And it's torment won't be through Till you let me spend my whole life Making all kinds of love to you Day and night Day. 
And its torment won't be through Till you let me spend my whole life Making all kinds of love to you Day and night Night and day Day and night Night and day Hi, Colton. Hello, Billy. How's it going? Well, it's very interesting times. It definitely is. It's it's good and bad for music, but I really think it's a lot of good because I've always loved being in the studio, so recording is lots of fun for me always, and um, I enjoy working in the studio, and I can fix things when I want to. <laughs> I can change <laughs> things quickly. As opposed to live, you know, you're there, and you're doing it, and, you know, you're just, you're stuck on your own. I have someone singing in the background. Hi! <laughs> I got him. And awesome. I see you're a guitarist. Me? Yeah. Uh, more so a bass player, but yes, I do play a little guitar here and there as well. Well, I just see a box in the back, so I don't know. <laughs> yes, it's uh, there are two cases. So yeah, one acoustic bass, one acoustic bass, one uh, electric bass. That acoustic bass has been a lot of places. Yes, yes, it uh, has. <laughs> Traveled anyway, a few times. Anyway, I'm here. Nice to chat with you. Oh, it's a it's a absolute pleasure and honor to be able to chat with you as well, Billy. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh well, I'm just thankful that you're willing to take the time to uh, join me today, so we can dive a little bit into this uh, new EP that you recently released, and a few other things as well. Oh yes, I'm I'm kind of all over the map with music. I love music. I do jazz, as you know, I do gospel, I do house, I do all kinds of things, and so it's, a, it's an exciting time. I'm writing a little bit more, uh, and that's good for me, and uh, actually uh, a new thing that I'm working with is just creating titles, and to see how I can create a title and then go into a lyric, so that's something new I'm, I'm trying. Oh, wow. Interesting. So trying yes. to explore different patterns and ways to create still. Yes, because, you know, you sit down usually and you just write a song. You get music, you write a song, you come up with a hook, this, that, and the other. And uh, the the people I'm working with, I work a lot with Molly Johnson and the Kensington Market Jazz Festival. And uh, Jean-Vierre Meritet actually is working with me a lot. And uh, they have a lot of great energy and, and, you know, put a lot of great stuff there on the table for me to think about. And uh, which is really why this EP happened, because I was uh, working on the stuff to, to do those shows. And then I finally decided, well, I got to do some songs that I would love to do every night of my life for the rest of my life. And this is where the concept of uh, Have We Ever Met came up. And... Um, it's it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun because I have a lot of uh, music history, you know, behind me. So new things are always great. Definitely, definitely. You're a uh, storied musician for sure. And you mentioned that you've spent quite a bit of time inside of the house genre, picking up a Juno, working with At Play, doing a lot of different things inside of yes. that world, but still taking the time to uh, return to the roots a little bit here. Well, definitely, because I always feel great on stage, and I love live. Uh, live, you know, live is always fantastic when you really kind of find your sound and you find your players. And I've been very fortunate to find players now that I really, really like. Stuart Harrison is, is one of my he's a good friend and he's a great arranger. He's a great pianist. Mike Downs is also a great arranger, great bass player. So I'm surrounding myself with some really seasoned musicians as well to uh, complete these projects. 
Okay, okay, awesome. At what point did you uh, start to record these projects? Because like you said, it's sort of been a weird year. So were you trying to record some of these things throughout the pandemic? Or was this new EP something that you had already sort of had together since you said like before you were working on it for the Keniston Market Jazz Festival? Yes, uh, Kensington Market Jazz Festival. Um, yes, it, it, it kind of started, you know, uh, with that. And yes, it was created before the pandemic. But how, how so much it relates to the pandemic. Uh, the EP, have you seen the EP yet? I've seen it. I've heard it. Very I mean, lovely. I, no, have you seen the EPK yet? That's, that's... Um, yes, I believe I have. Yeah, well, that was just what set me on fire because you do these, doing the, the footage is, is always surprising because there's usually a script, but a great director will always find different places to go in to catch you and to get you in the most beautiful moments, the most vulnerable moments. And the uh, EPK really set me on fire. And after I looked at it, I really kind of thought, I do know who I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... I have an exciting past and a, and a very exciting future and just play the game. You just play the game. You just stay out there. You just keep singing. Um, I sing in church. Um, I sing for galas. Um, I've done some work with uh, some recent gentlemen from the nylons that I had kind of worked with before in the past. I did something mm -hmm. with them. So I just keep my feet in the fire. Mm -hmm, definitely. And you're even still continuing to work with various charities and causes that are important to you and people that are around you that you love. So definitely still staying busy. Yes. Um, this uh, past now, when you bring stuff into uh, the cult to the to COVID and the pandemic um, this summer, when it first hit, I got a call to do a pride party. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, pride party. I sat, put my little thinking cap on and just came up with some ideas, presented it to the client. They loved it. And we went for it with it. And it was a very interesting thing because it was the beginning of, you know, doing these virtual performances. And after that, I got a chance to do uh, a, a virtual performance for the 519, which is a community center here in Toronto that is a very big uh, on church street it it caters to the lgbtq2 spirit you know community mm -hmm. and that's what i do anything i can do for my people all people for that matter but all people for that matter but the 519 kind of represents the all people thing then following that performance i was invited to do a performance for rainbow railroad Rainbow Railroad um, gets people out internationally uh, when they're in chaos, being gay and lesbian, and uh, it could be anywhere, Africa, China, but we raise money to give them money to get them out of their situations. Oh, wow. And that wow. really, um, that was a big one for me. I really, it, it, it really touched my heart. And that was called a gospel brunch, which touched on my gospel roots. Uh, and just to go back a little bit with the 519, the 519, um, I did some jazz, some jazzy stuff. So that kind of, you know, was all part of that EP and that EPK thing. But then when I did the Rainbow Railroad thing, it was a gospel brunch that I had done last summer that they asked me to do virtually. And it was amazing. So, uh, yeah, I get, to do, I get to do some good stuff. Yes, definitely. Uh, continuing to make positive change in your world as you have uh, continued to do throughout your career. Yes. Always. Yeah. Always, Fantastic. always. Hey, it's, uh, you got to use your platform, right? Yes, I do. That's it. Is and I'm sure very, very many people appreciate and love you for doing uh, continuing to do so well that part you know it, it touches my heart when you say that because it does mean a lot to me um i've been with my partner for going on 20 27 years i think oh wow 
And uh, when I first met him, you know, I had been solo for a long, long time. And at that time, uh, my partner was a deacon at Metropolitan Community Church in Toronto, which is the big gay church here. And I got involved with them. It was deep into the AIDS crisis at that time. A lot of people were dying and a lot of people were getting sick. And that's kind of how my journey started. And that's when I, you know, Colton, I, I decided, you know, it's, it's great to be this jazz singer or it's great to be this gospel singer, but it's just great to be a singer and to be able to offer myself and my talent and my time to worthy causes. And that brings us into, you know, the EP because this is another platform that will take me into other cities, other areas, other parts of the world. And that's my job. It's a job, you know, that I get to use my talent to sing and to catch the attention through that venue. So it, it, it really is exciting for me. Mm -hmm. Not only continuing to uh, honor your past with this EP, but also honoring the future and moving forward. Yes, yes, very, very much so, because these are very trying times. But we also have to look at it as being new times and new ways and new ways of thinking. And uh, that's where my music comes in. I, I just keep infusing different things around it. Just like I said, to keep me platform, platform ready. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So let's dive a little bit further into this EP. So there's five very classic songs on here. What was the uh, process of selecting these songs? Why these five songs specifically? Those, those are songs that I want to sing every night. Those songs have a history or a past with me. Every, every song has... Uh, some meaning of where I was at a time, where my head was. But let's say, for instance, Night and Day and All the Things You Are are songs that I chose many years ago when I was on the Broadway stage. And I would finish the Broadway stage, and then I'd go into nightclubs, and I'd go sing and do my sets. And so this kind of pulled, it, it ties into, I love those songs. They're, they're great songs. They're uh, uh, you, I don't know if you know, but I did a show called UB, uh, which is a song about, which is a show about UB Blake. He actually wrote the hit song, I'm Just Wild About Harry. You weren't even born then, but I'm Just Wild About <laughs> Harry uh, was a classic, you know, with, with um, this writer. And uh, I love Duke Ellington. I love Cole Porter. I love, uh, I, I just love these guys. So... The thought behind it, you know, was these were chestnuts and that they were lovely songs to sing. And they were songs that put me on the stage to say hello to you. Grandma's Hands great song. is a very interesting song. Uh, Bill Withers uh, was a great author and a great, great musician and performer. Uh, that song came from, you know, my upbringing of, uh, my mom, my mom is dead, my dad's dead, but my mom was great. And, you know, there's always tension between parents and kids. I was an only child, so there were real issues around a lot of things, you know, my, my sexuality, who I was, how I thought, what I dressed like, just all those things. But my grandmothers didn't care about any of that stuff. They just loved me. And when I heard Grandma's Hands, I just thought about, because I had a Grandma Susie and I had a Grandma Vinnie, and they were girls from the South, and how they just would take me in their arms and hold me and support me, because uh, I kind of started singing when I was five. And uh, so they knew that, you know, I was destined to do that. I mean, I had one grandmother who said, you just got to get out there. You, you're going to be bigger than Sammy Davis one day, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 you know, just those women inspired me. So Grandma's Hands was actually a story I felt that was about me that I could relate to, that I could chat with my audience about and say, you know, I've been there and I did that. 
and I went to church, you know, with my with my grandmother. I watched my grandmothers get up and go to work, not feeling well, hurting feet, cold weather, uh, you know, uh, not the best of scenarios and situations. And um, that's where that kind of sat in. My mom was always fabulous. You know, my mom was cool. She, you know, we, we hang we hung out for a while and, and, you know, in my growing up uh, and I loved her and I loved dressing her up and making her look good and keeping her current, uh, which brings me to talk about where or when. Um, Barbara Streisand, I saw Barbara Streisand, you weren't even born again. Not born again. You weren't born. You hadn't arrived. Not born again, Christian. Uh, but <laughs> I was watching TV because I used to watch you know, a lot of variety shows. And Judy Garland was alive and Barbara Streisand was on the show and I saw the show and I was just in awe over Barbara Streisand. It, she was just amazing. She was beautiful. She was strange looking. She was beautiful. She, she had beautiful dresses and gowns. Uh, but my mom would give me money and I saved up for this album called Color Me Barbara. And I, I saved up my money. It came in red vinyl nice. with a pink, yes, with a pink cover. And I played that album day in, day out. I, I wore it out. I had to get another one. <laughs> and they didn't have it in red. You know, they didn't have the red vinyl anymore. But Where or When was a very, very interesting song. And I think um, as a boy, you know, boys and girls fall in love and, have their stories about that little boy or that little girl that they loved and they want to sit next to them in school. They want to bring in candy and apples. So, you know, that was always kind of around me. There's always a story. There's always a story about me. And that's kind of where that music kind of came from. Just my life, my past, what I love, what I love to listen to and what I want to give you. And I also think that it's great music for young people to, to touch base with. I mean, you know, we, we have Drake, we have The Weeknd, you know, we have Dua Lipa, we have Nicki Minaj, we have great artists, you know, we have, they're, they're all over the map. Um, but I know that there are some young people that really like to touch into those chestnuts, those old songs, those uh, standards. That's the word I was looking for, standards. <laughs> that I figured that young people will search and pull out and listen to standards. If you, if you give it to them, they'll listen. To and uh, that's kind of where that came from. Sometimes you think you've lived before All that you live today Things you do come back to you as if they knew the way Oh, the tricks your mind can play It seems we stood and talked like this before We looked at each other in the same way But I can't remember where or when The clothes you are wearing are the clothes you wore Smile, you are smiling, you were smiling then But I can't remember when Oh, when Some things that happen for the first time Seem to be happening 
again And so it seems we have met Before and laughed before And love before Man who knows Where when a lot of newer artists who happen to sample a yes, lot of those classic tunes as yes, well. Their listeners maybe don't necessarily uh, even know where those samples come from. Well, yes. Yes, and you're so correct. I mean, you know, it's not just about a James Brown sample. And, you know, James Brown samples are big, and you hear them, you know. But standards are very, very interesting pieces of music because... You know, you have grandparents, you have great-great-grandparents, and you have great-great-great-grandparents. And I was lucky enough, again, to have people around me to play music for me, to get me interested in music. My dad loved music. We listened to everything from Aretha to Michael Santa Maria to Kate Smith to Ella Fitzgerald to Sarah Vaughan, Billy Eckstein. Aretha is my, she's my heart. She touches my heart and I still cry, you know, many times when I hear her sing because her passion for music uh, just has continued to lead me down that beautiful path. And I love the way she did it. You know, she did go from gospel to jazz to R&B and soul. And that's my journey that I want to be able to deliver all those songs. I don't want to be stuck in a genre. Uh, I want to be able to sing all kinds of songs. I heard a guy the other day, and I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Uh, actually, my friend Gigi told me about him, Mario Biondi. Okay. And this is an Italian singer. He was born in Catania, and he sounds like Barry White. And it just, when I... I, I, I went to SoundCloud and I, I pulled him up and I started listening and I was just freaking. I was like, how does he know that? Well, we know that when we are in touch with music and we hear things. Like, I just had a feeling and a sense about him that the sound and the timbre in his voice was so attractive to me that it, 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 it excited me. And... That's what I love about music. It, it has to excite you. Now, I'm going to tell you something really funny. I rarely listen to the radio. I rarely, I mean, well, there is no radio, but I rarely <laughs> listen to mainstream. You know, we have Alexa in here somewhere. I mean, I don't want to say it too loud. She might start talking. <laughs> uh, but we have, you know, we have access to, to a lot of, uh, of music. But I don't know singers like when I was younger I don't know a lot of the newer singers I know Justin Bieber I know um, The Weeknd I know Drake I know uh, the the beautiful singer that plays guitar uh, what's his name 
He's very popular with beautiful curly hair. Shawn oh, Mendes. Uh, yes. Shawn Mendes. You know, I, I love I love these kids. Uh, I often wonder what they're thinking. Um, and I I'm also very always interest, interested to see how how they simplify a song. It's very simplified. It's a very easy listen. In my songwriting, I was always trying to contrive something unique. And, and now I'm just thinking, people just talk about their lives, Colton. They talk about every day. They talk about things that are happening. They're not, uh, it, it touches, you know, music just touches on all kinds of things. So I'm touched by music. I'm really touched by music. But no, I'm not that person that sits and just kind of listens in a car because I don't drive and stuff. So I don't get that that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes me reach further to find things to say about. Hey, it's uh, sometimes it's like searching for diamonds, right? Sometimes there's some coal, but when you when you find that thing that uh, hits your ears right, worth it. Worth yes, it. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So one thing that I'm definitely interested to find out about this EP here is that you recorded it all live off the floor, which definitely isn't something that a lot of people do these days. Right. Probably something you haven't done in a while. So what was it like to get back into that sort of a uh, style of recording to practice with everybody to make sure that you're prepared all of the fun things that went into it well it's first of all it's a brilliant concept it's the concept that i want to continue to work with people that you know are writing more than 10 songs now they're writing 30 songs they're writing 40 songs uh, and i was thinking about that the other day you know how i'm going to extend my writing but in reference to being on the floor mike downs uh, basically did these arrangements of these charts. He's brilliant. He, he's just a fine, fine bass player, but he has a great ear. And we chose the guys that we want to work with. That would have been Stu, Harrison, and Ben Ball. And we just, I, I remember coming into the studio and I just had to make sure everybody was fed because everybody has to be fed. You can't be working and be hungry. So that was my mission when I came in, what do you want to eat? We're going to order. You know, that was like my, my thing of the day. And then we sat down and we talked about the charts that Mike had written. And he kind of went over the charts with the guys. We went in, I went in a, in a small room because at first I thought they were going to lay down things. And then I was just going to do the vocal, which kind of happened later. But still, we all went in our own little rooms and we started and I could just hear them. And it was exciting. It was so wonderful because you did the song in the moment. You didn't have a chance to redo it, mm -hmm. which we kind of did some stuff later to fix it up, to make it better. But, but you're on the floor and you're live and it's exciting. And you can see, I could see my guys. I could see the, the expressions. Um, they liked the songs. When I work with a band, it, it's, very, it's very important to me that they like what they're doing. Because if they don't like what they're doing, they're not going to do it well. So that was a whole other thing that we had gone over. You like this? Yeah. You like that? Um, that feel? Oh, I'm not sure about that feel. Can we just change that up a little bit? And that is what really makes you know, being live on the floor exciting because you really touch, you touch each other. It's just not all about me because without those guys, I can do acapella easily, but without those guys, that, that's what brought forth that beautiful music that you hear. And I listen to it all the time and I'm just like fascinated by, oh, wow, they really got it. So that's, I think, the beauty of, of doing it on the floor. And also, you know, that's a very old school and it, it, it and it, it's very good. If people can do it, they should do it. it takes a little more time, but it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. It uh, it definitely adds that different vibe. You like you said, where you can see everybody else's energy, and rather than being like, "Oh, am I getting everything perfectly? Am I getting everything perfectly?" It's like, "Oh, everybody's having a really good time here." 
Yes. And there were some things that were not maybe planned or, but that is the greatness of being on the floor with the music because you, you, you have those opportunities to, to have that freedom and to feel free. And that's very, very important that, like I said, that my musicians are happy. I, when I eat, they eat. You know, when I drink, they drink. It's never just all about me. It's about the unit and the concept because we all have to bring it forward. Uh, I did a show this, this past, uh, no, two summers ago, I guess it was. Now COVID has kind of knocked my mind around. <laughs> anyway, I did a live show. And I did these songs and it was just fantastic because that was the other thing. I had worked on these songs before I knew them before I recorded them. Like I really knew them. I, I could stand there and sing them in my head. I would have sheets around and lyrics just, you know, but I knew the work and that made it exciting as well. Nice. Nice. Awesome. So we spoke earlier about some of the, um, streamed performances and video performances that you have done so far and we spoke about the epk as well which kind of took us behind the scenes is there any plans to sort of do a uh, studio video performance of these tracks for your fans to be able to see on youtube or otherwise yes that's the next plan the next plan is to be live on the floor to continue because this is a continuation this is a project that's going to keep going but next will be virtual like i want to be i want the cameras rolling because i also found that those are the moments that you really want to catch from the performance you want to see what the performer was feeling and and you can catch it and that's what was exciting about doing those virtual performances that i could come and i could look at them like i look at my work and I'm excited by my work, and it's not an ego thing. It, it's, it's more like you get to see what you do. You can improve it if you want, or you just get to see the soulfulness, and you just keep playing on that. You, you, you just keep looking at, wow, that was really a beautiful moment, and that's what you want to capture in music. You want to capture beautiful moments. Absolutely. Absolutely for sure. And I'm sure with the other music that you're writing as well, that's definitely the plan going forward. Yes, there's going to be original. Well, there's, there is original music. There's already some songs in the fire, but there is original music. And there will be some more chestnuts coming along your way. <laughs> well, I can't wait to uh, crack them open and uh, see what magic they bring me. Yes, Colton. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Billy Newton Davis, yes. I want to say thank you so very much. It is an honor to be able to dive behind the scenes of this new EP with a legend of the music industry. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Am Bush, for tuning in to this conversation with Billy Newton Davis as we dove into his new EP Have We Met which you can find in its entirety on your favorite music streaming service I also suggest you go and follow him on YouTube and social media so that when he drops those live off the floor performance videos for you you can go ahead and check them out A-S-A-P. Now it is time for our Desert Tiger Roaring. Thank yous, and the first one of those goes out to Billy Newton Davis for joining us here today. The second one, of course, goes out to you, yes, you, the loyal, dedicated Ambush, for tuning into this episode, for supporting the podcast like you love to do. If you have yet to join up with the Am, it is so easy. It is as easy as hitting the subscribe or follow button on the podcast listening app or service that you're using 
right now. And you can also help us out in a few other ways. You can review the show by giving it a big old five stars on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. You can share this episode on your social media with your friends, your family, anyone who you think would enjoy it. And you can also head on over to DesertTigerMerch.com to cop yourself something to represent the show. Yes. Next Tuesday on the podcast, January 19th, 2021, we are joined by... Jesse Maxwell as we dive into his latest single, Undone, which dropped today. And next week, me and Jesse are also teaming up to give one of you, one of the Ambush, a $50 Visa gift card through our Instagram page. So if you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, I highly suggest you head over there right now hit follow so that when that contest drops on Monday the 18th, you can go ahead and get yourself signed up right away. Yes, that's going down. Next Tuesday, an interview with Jesse Maxwell. Next Monday to Thursday, a contest giving away a $50 Visa gift card. That's next week. And until then... Until then, I want you to go out there to find your mountaintop, to find your oasis, the thing that makes your heart sing to its fullest capacity and glory. Go out there, find your roar, craft your roar, and once you're finally ready, release your roar across that canyon, that waterfront. Let the world know just how beautiful, how wondrous, and powerful your roar can be because you, deep down, are all of those things. And until next Tuesday, bye bye